people that you meet today? Recording in progress. <laughs> and just have a great time, all right? Because we only do this once a year. Leave it all at the table, I'm just saying. For all the contestants today, good luck to you. You are all winners already, so let's congratulate you. You're all winners. You represent yourselves well and the organization, and this is what it's all about, communication. And to the leaders that were elected last night, and to the current team, we still have a lot of work to do. But I'm not going to make you work tonight or, or today. We're just going to have fun, all right? So we will turn this meeting back over to our able Toastmaster, Mr. Thank Russell Drake. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you. On the screen, we'll have our flag. We're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. If you please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes, give yourselves a hand. All righty. Now, 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 now. There is a tradition uh, in our district that's called the Parade of Banners. And so how this usually would work is we'd line up all 50 of our clubs out in the hallway, and then they would parade through as they're announced, and they would show their banners as they walk through. As we are now building up our conferences so that we'll be able to do that in the future, we're just going to do a banner display. So if you have your, your banner, please come forward to the front. If you would, please, please, please have your banner come up front. Banners are coming, banners are coming, banners are coming, indeed. All right, here we go. Come on, Jim. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> anywhere, any, anywhere. Just ah, we have more and more. All righty, good. What we're going to do. Where, 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 are, where are you? Yeah, you can. There you go. All right, all right. Very good. All right, I'm going to let everyone introduce the, their, their club. Jim Yolings, Cranberry Area Toastmasters. 9843. I'm in that club. Kirk Weber, Butler, Early Birds, 2255. All right. Stephanie Scott, Pro Masters, 3600773. I'm in that one too. Mike Dalton, Greensburg, 4021. Yay! Lindy Riley, Cranberry High Noon, 3331208. Oh! <laughs> Jackie Hirschberger, Penn State Pingers, 7132. All right, everybody. you know what? I, this I, this is kind of you see how yes, she's done this. This is really that. neat. This is really neat right there. Outstanding. All righty. That's a Jim Thor thing. Oh, I'll, that's all right. all right. We all right. So all right, you learned something this morning. Well, next time, next next year, we sure come check, come check it out. We have it right. All righty. Thank you. Give her, everybody give him a hand, please. Pictures are taken. Thank you, y'all. As our folks are going back, I'm going to pull up our club growth director, Mr. Excitement himself, <laughs> distinguished Toastmaster, Fred Vornbrock. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Toastmasters. Are you ready for breakfast? Yes. <laughs> too late, too late, sorry. Hey, let's pull out our agendas or our programs and let's read together the district mission. It reads as follows. Together now, 
We build new clubs and support all clubs in achieving excellence. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Fred. It's pretty interesting that we need to remember the district mission all the time. We are about growth, but we're also about building the clubs that we have, maintaining the ones that we have and growing them, and doing that through, uh, through excellence. So we're gonna build clubs, we're gonna be excellent with the ones that we have. Now, how many people are first timers? Would you stand please if this is your first time being at a conference in person? Thank you, thank you. Please have a seat. Uh, next year, bring a friend. That's, that's, that's how we do that. <laughs> Sorry, I have to go get my agenda. I thought I had it memorized, my bad. All right. Ah, we get to acknowledge dignitaries. They give me a list, so I'm gonna have to look, look around the room to make sure, let me start at this table over here. Of course, we have our district director, Jean Humphreys. Yay. We will introduce our international director in just a few minutes. Over here, we have past district governor, past region advisor, past international director, Melissa McGavick. And we have the District Governor Whisperer, <laughs> Distinguished Toastmaster, Mike Dalton. <laughs> Who do we have online? I can't. Mike. Hey, Mike Blazer. Hey, man. <laughs> Mike Blazer, Distinguished Toastmaster, past the District <laughs> Governor. <laughs> you know, our current, who, who am I missing here? Seth Where, ah. I'm just going to say this publicly. The love of my life, this distinguished Toastmaster, Stephanie Scott. <laughs> All righty. So, I. No, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring her up here. I'm going to bring her directly. I want to give her all her stuff at one at one time. All right. All right. All that she has coming. All that she has coming is on a piece of paper here. There we go. All right. So, just just as you know, sometimes when we go through things, there's there's context and there's content. Context is. Don't leave your stuff over at the podium if you're the person that's in front that's the Toastmaster. You should keep it with you so you're not leaving this place blank. But, all right. So we are honored to have an international director here today. We all join Toastmasters for different reasons. We have different goals and different objectives, but we share one common vision to become a better version of ourselves. Our keynote speaker this morning is distinguished Toastmaster Dawn Frail, and she will share with us the keys to transforming our lives and soaring to new heights. Through the power of intrinsic motivation, we gain more success and satisfaction in life when internal drivers are engaged. Learn to empower personal growth, elevate key skills, and find deep meaning and purpose as you unleash the potential in yourself and in others. Don joined Toastmasters 33 years ago when her IT career had stalled. Her lack of confidence when communicating with others was getting in the way and her boss gave her the opportunity to fix it by joining the in-house Toastmasters Club. Since then, she has competed in contests, presented at international conventions, and written for the Toastmasters magazine. Her leadership journey, like many of us, started at the club level. Currently, Don is serving as our International Director from Region 6. As a member of the Toastmasters International Board of Directors, Don is a working ambassador for the organization. 
She works with the board to develop, support, and modify the policies and procedures that guide Toastmasters International in fulfilling its mission. To share her message today of soaring towards success, please welcome International Director from Region 6, from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Distinguished Toastmaster, Don Frail. Jillian was in trouble again. Seven-year-old Jillian was so disruptive in school. Her mother was sitting there with Jillian in the principal's office as the principal would regale the stories of what a terrible child she was. She couldn't focus. She couldn't sit still. She was talking all the time. She was so disruptive. She wouldn't do her schoolwork. She must, therefore, have some kind of a learning disability. How many of you are parents in the room? Aunts? Uncles? How many of you think this sort of sounds like a typical case of ADHD? <laughs> well, Jillian was seven years old in 1930. And we didn't have, or they didn't have, not we, they in 1930, didn't have a label for what was wrong with Jillian. But the principal implored her mother, take her to the doctor, because clearly there's something wrong. So she did. So Jillian and her mother are sitting in the doctor's office, and the mother is recounting the tale of woe about what a disruptive and terrible student her daughter was. The doctor listened, and at one point he said to Jillian, I need to talk to your mom in private for a minute so we're just going to step right outside this door but we're going to be right back and as the mother and the doctor got up and went out into the hallway the doctor turned on the radio now they're talking outside and the doctor says to the mother look through the window and look at Jillian and what was going on inside Jillian was dancing and moving and grooving to the radio and the songs, and she was having just a grand old time. And the doctor said to the mother, Jillian's not sick. She's a dancer. Now, how many of you feel as though you have a dancer or a racehorse inside you, <laughs> just or a marathon runner inside you waiting to get out? You feel held back. You feel misunderstood. You feel as though you have something to offer that has not yet been unleashed. Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. Well, that's where Jillian was. When we think about how do we unleash that power in each of us, the power of intrinsic motivation, how do we spark that inner passion, that inner joy, that inner desire inside us. If that's of interest to you, <laughs> you are in the right place at the right time. That's what I'm going to talk about today. Now the things that I will talk about today are found in the book Drive by Daniel Pink. If you have read that book, if you have seen that book, fabulous. If not, I strongly encourage you to add that to your library, your personal library. Because the power of intrinsic motivation is what this book is all about. And Daniel really breaks it down into three key things. He must have been a Toastmaster. He did it in threes. <laughs> and I call it making the most of your map. The M stands for mastery, and we're going to do a deep dive into each one of these three this morning. The second is autonomy, and the third is purpose. 
When we understand these three things, we can tap into the surprising truth about what motivates us. If you are a leader in the room, in your Toastmasters club, at work, in your community, how do you get people to do things so that they want to do them? If you are a leader in your family, how do you get your kids to make their bed? I'll tell you today. If you are an officer or if you are a leader in your Toastmasters club, how do you get people to truly become great leaders? Because I believe there is no better leadership training than to learn how to lead a group of volunteers over whom you have no power over their paycheck. So today is all about making the most of your map. And we're going to do a deep dive into each of these so that you have the ability to run your best race. Are you ready? Yes. Very good. Let's start with mastery. So what is mastery? Mastery is the desire to get better at something that matters. So do you have something that you care about, something that you really want to do? If you do, when you find that, spend the time and energy to get really, really good at it. Whatever it is, and it doesn't matter. Things that you can do in order to develop this mastery is, first of all, to nurture a growth mindset. Now, I'm probably preaching a little bit to the choir here in the Toastmasters world, but when you think about growth mindset, maybe you've read the book by Carol Dweck, who talks th about the difference between growth mindset and fixed mindset. Growth mindset believes that you have this infinite ability to learn and to grow, that your intellect is not fixed, but that you can continue to develop, learn more, do more, be more. Nurture that mindset here in your Toastmasters community. Speaking of Toastmasters, our education path is our pathway to mastery. Work the education program. We are 100 years old. Whoop, whoop. Happy anniversary. We have a formula that works. So work the formula. Be enrolled in pathways. If you're not enrolled in pathways, please don't tell me. <laughs> but get right on that. Add that to your list of action items coming out of today and enroll in pathways and start on the incredible journey of learning and growing. And embrace challenges and obstacles as opportunities. You know, success is a very poor teacher. Failure, on the other hand, is an extraordinary teacher. The beautiful thing about the Toastmasters program is that we assume coming in, we have no idea what we're doing. We had conversations at breakfast this morning where we all came into Toastmasters knowing nothing, less than nothing, and have learned and grown. That's the beauty of the Toastmasters program. You learn by doing. You don't know how to take on a role? Doesn't matter. Sign up and you'll figure it out. You don't know how to participate in a contest? Doesn't matter. Sign up. You'll figure it out. You don't know what's next for you as far as a, an executive role or something beyond your club? Sign up. Say yes. Then you'll figure it out. Embrace those challenges and overcome obstacles because they are the secret to our success. There is somebody who said, I was convinced the only thing I ever wanted to do was to write novels. She was six years old when she wrote her first story. Her first story was called Rabbit. It was about a rabbit named Rabbit. <laughs> and Rabbit had the measles, and the story was about all the people who came to visit Rabbit while he was in bed with the measles. She wrote her first novel when she was 11 years old. The novel was about seven cursed diamonds and the people who owned them. Maybe you recognize this woman. J.K. Rowling, we all know the Harry Potter, I, I assume we all know the Harry Potter series. We know the end of the story. We know the success story. What we don't know is struggling as a single mother 
skipping classes in college to just hide out and write stories. She knew what she wanted and she became excellent at it. I encourage you to Google her commencement speech that she gave at Harvard. She'll tell you a little bit about her story. A fascinating, fascinating woman. How many of you just love to be told what to do? Come on, I know you're in the room somewhere. Where are you? Who, who? No, 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 not one of you? Love? One, I know, right? There's always one. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Autonomy is the second element in making the most of your map. If you want to run your own, if you want to run your best race, you have to run your own race. <laughs> Autonomy is a deep-seated desire to direct our own lives. As human beings, we truly want to be in charge of our lives. We want to do things our way. We don't want to do it somebody else's way. Oftentimes, though, as adults, we're forced to live somebody else's life. We don't live our lives by design. We live our lives by default, directed by somebody else. But that's not what we want. That's not what we want. As humans, we have this deep-seated desire to run our own race. When I was about 10 years old, my family, we actually owned a racehorse. Sky Comish ran out of Woodbine Racetrack in Toronto, Ontario. He was a terrible horse. <laughs> he never won anything. We ended up actually sending him down ultimately to the US to run in different races throughout the United States, which were supposedly easier. He didn't win any of those either. <laughs> but regardless of whether he won or not, Sky Comish was a racehorse and he needed to run his own race. He couldn't race on certain tracks, he would be dead last. But on other kinds of tracks, depending on weather and what the turf was made of, he could do much better. He never won, and so it was all only money out, never money in, so we didn't own Sky Comish for very long, but he had to run his own race. We have to and we want to run our own race. When it comes to Toastmasters, I encourage you to own your own journey. The Pathways Education Program serves as a guide. Serves as a guide. Now, how many of you have finished a path? Finished a path, okay? So those of you who've not raised your hands or either are not Toastmasters, but are about to be, right? Because we, somewhere in my pocket, I have a membership form. So if your hand, if you have not yet finished a path, that means you have maybe delivered perhaps at least one speech, unless you're brand new. Anybody in the room not even given their icebreaker yet? Anybody? Anybody that new? So everybody's given an icebreaker? Awesome. That is my favorite speech of all time to listen to. After 33 years in Toastmasters, I'm most excited when there is an icebreaker on the agenda. Why? Because I know the step you are about to take in your life. I know the journey that you are about to embark on. And I am so excited for you. How many of you have done more than one icebreaker? More than one icebreaker. Keep your hand up. Oh, this is being recorded. If you choose to keep your hand up, keep your hand up if you have complained about having to do a second icebreaker. Or a third icebreaker. Okay, thank you for your honesty. I appreciate it. <laughs> I love it when people complain about doing more than one icebreaker because it gives me the opportunity to say, when you gave your last icebreaker, are you the exact same person that you were back then? 
Oftentimes, the answer is, well, not really, or it was so long ago, it's not. You know, I'm not the same person. Well, when you go to do your next icebreaker, you now have the opportunity to present who you are now, how much you've grown, what you've done. So I would encourage all of you to look forward to your next icebreaker so you can do some self-reflection. You can celebrate how much you've achieved. You can, des you can tell people how you've lived your life by design and tell us about that, who you are today through another icebreaker. Who's excited to give their next icebreaker? Come on. <laughs> All right. If your VP's education is in the room, we hope that they're taking notes because you'll be on the schedule soon. Okay. We have to do the Toastmasters program our own way. Yes, when we're new, it teaches us techniques and skills that we may not know, but as we move on and we progress through the program, we have the opportunity to be a little flexible. So I encourage you in your clubs, if you're evaluating a speaker or if you're the Toastmaster of the day and somebody goes a little bit off script when it comes to their Pathways project, let that happen because that's a Toastmaster living their own journey. Using the Toastmasters program the way that it suits them to develop them and empower your members to make that change. I want to tell you about Michelle. Michelle was a member of the very first Toastmasters Club I ever joined. We were a large Canadian bank, IT. Michelle was an IT professional as well. I have never, ever in all of my life met anybody as nervous as Michelle. She, like me, was sent down to the Toastmasters Club because she was so nervous. She couldn't talk in meetings either. So she came into our club. She stayed with us for about a year, just over a year. And you know what? Michelle never gave a speech, not even her icebreaker. We tried every trick in the book to get her on stage to do her icebreaker and she wouldn't, she refused. But she wanted to stay. So you know what we did? Huh? We convinced her to be sergeant at arms. Now in our club, the sergeant at arms starts at the lectern, bangs the gavel, and introduces the Toastmaster of the day. That's it. The very first time she came up to introduce the Toastmaster, she had the gavel there at the lectern. She very softly tapped it, and she said, Kirk is our Toastmaster today. And she left. Didn't even stay to wait. Like she left the lectern naked. <laughs> she just took off. A year later, she introduced the Toastmaster. She had that gavel. She wielded it like a samurai sword. And she said, Kirk is our Toastmaster today. Kirk has been a Toastmaster for three years in this club. He works in this department in the bank. And you are in for a treat today because Kirk has a very special treat for you. Kirk, welcome. Give me a warm Toastmaster's welcome. Kirk, our Toastmaster for today. And she would leave the applause. She would wait. She would confidently shake Kirk's hand. And that was her transformation. Now you may say, not even giving an icebreaker after a year is a failure from a Toastmaster story perspective. But ask Michelle what she got out of Toastmasters, and she would tell you that Toastmasters changed her life, literally. So allow your people to do things their own way. So think about your Toastmasters journey. What is it that's next for you and what will you do your own way? Become masterful at what it is that you want to accomplish, figure out how you want to do it, and then behind that, what's your purpose? What's your why? Our purpose is really about serving a cause greater than ourselves. What is it that really drives you? What is it that really inspires you? 
What is it that you really want to do? I knew when Sky Komish was at the gate, he wasn't going to win. I never bet on him. I mean, I, w- I was only 11, so I couldn't bet anyway. But we would also tell people, don't pick Sky Komish. <laughs> but you knew when that bell rang and that gate opened, you knew he had a purpose. You knew he knew why he was there. He was bred to be a racer. He knew when that gate opened, gone. Now, maybe gone a little bit later than every other horse, (laughs) but he was still gone. He knew what he was, and he knew what he wanted to do. He knew his why. So how do you discover your why? I would encourage you to unveil your deep sense of purpose and find your why and connect that to the Toastmasters program. I think for many of us, we join Toastmasters because we want to have more confidence. Maybe we're afraid. Maybe you're terrified like me to speak in public, and so that's why you started in the beginning. We had a member who joined our club because he was looking for a wife, and he said that. (laughs) And he found one. In our Toastmasters club. Yeah, he found a wife. But he was very clear about what he wanted to get out of Toastmasters. People join Toastmasters for all kinds of different reasons. When you think about what your personal values are, align those with your Toastmasters goals. I had a friend who had a severely disabled daughter. She was a, I knew her through my church, and we would see her, her daughter was in a wheelchair, she was not not highly functional, she couldn't speak, she needed help being fed, but her parents believed that she had infinite potential. When I told her about the Toastmasters program, she came. And she came to a speech craft. How many of you know what speech craft is? And at the end of that speech craft session, we had a a, a little celebration, if you will, and had people who had just graduated from the speech craft program talk about why did you join and what did you get? And she said, I came to get courage. Because she said, I would be at work or I would be somewhere. And people don't necessarily know that I have a disabled daughter. And people would talk about people with disabilities. And they would talk in a way that really made her angry. They shouldn't be able to do this or they shouldn't be able to do that. Or all kinds of opinions that people had who did not have personal experience in that situation. She said, what I got out of Toastmasters was the next time somebody said something, I was able to speak up. I was able to give my perspective as a mother to say, this is what it's really like. And instead of just being angry all the time, she said, I had had found my voice. And it made her feel as though she could speak up for and stand up for her daughter. Now, did she ever get on stage and speak to 100 people or 500 people or a big audience? No. Her audience was one, just one person. But she found the courage. How many of you have found courage in Toastmasters? I'm putting up both hands. Finding courage to say something. Maybe it's, you know, to talk about experience you have. Maybe it's to speak at your brother's wedding. Maybe it's to ask that boss for a raise that you know you deserve and you know you've been passed over. And the thought previously of having to speak up for yourself and answer those tough questions and explain why you are worthy made you just kind of not do it at all. Toastmasters gives us courage. We get inspired 
when we find our unique purpose. And I would encourage you, look at the members in your club. How can you help them, inspire them to find their purpose? Because when somebody joins your club, and think about members of your club who've been around for a while, who maybe aren't doing speeches, who aren't taking on roles, who aren't stepping up to mentor others. How can you tap in to that intrinsic motivation and start with the why? Why would they want to do that? Why would your company want to have an in-house Toastmasters club? Why? What are the benefits? Because I can tell you, I believe every company on the planet needs their own Toastmasters club. Hallelujah. <laughs> if your company is not big enough, then send your employees to other Toastmasters clubs. There is a direct link between to the Toastmasters program and the bottom line of your organization. And it is a positive correlation, I can tell you that. Your company will make more money if you have more employees as a part of the Toastmasters program. So think about what's the why. Let people do it their own way and allow people to become masters at what it is that they do. Now, I am pleased to introduce you to Rahul. When I was district director, Rahul was one of my appointed area directors. I have never in all of my years in Toastmasters seen somebody so excited to get the home club of the area director ribbon. You would think he had just found the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. He was so excited. He was so, he had me so, look at my face. He had me so wound up because he was so excited. I was like bursting. I, I, it was incredible because that energy is contagious. He was my best area director. Why? Because he was excited. He knew that he had an opportunity to serve something greater than himself, and he embraced it. Daniel Rex, the CEO of Toastmasters International, says, and I actually think he's right, that the area director is the most important leadership role in all of Toastmasters. It is such an amazing opportunity to learn how to be a leader and to learn how to lead leaders. If you have a desire or if you have uh, somebody that you know who is looking to rise up the ranks in their company, get them into a Toastmasters club and get them to the point where they are willing to volunteer to be and put their name in to be area director. That is such great training ground. Now, I will tell you, I will admit, we're all among friends here. When I first became what was area governor back then, I did it because I needed that little check in the box for my DTM. That's the only reason I did it. And then I realized what it was all about. And it wasn't long before I got that fire in my belly and thought, wow, this is an amazing opportunity because I had never been able to go to, for a leadership position at work. I had no experience. I didn't have this. I didn't have that. I checked none of the boxes. But now I'm an area director. I'm officially a leader leading volunteers. And as I said before, there is no better training ground from a leadership perspective than to learn to lead volunteers, to do a job that's maybe not second in their priority list, maybe not even third in their priority list, maybe fourth or fifth. How do you motivate and inspire people for whom that is so far down their priority list that things just don't happen? Well, you do it by tapping into that intrinsic motivation, get the fire going in their belly, give them the opportunity to do it their own way, help them to build skills so that they can become a master of their own fate and be good at something. And they will move Toastmasters from number five on our priority list to number two. We, we want probably work, maybe number three, work to be number one, because you gotta pay the rent and you gotta put food on the table. Your family, and, and maybe it's, you know, that's reversed. But how do you get Toastmasters to be right there with them? By tapping in, just like Rahul did. 
you've got to run your own race. Now, if I were to have the opportunity to go right back to the beginning of my life and live the life that I was supposed to live, you know, the, the reason I was put on the planet, you know, that we sometimes we don't figure out and I didn't figure it out. But if I had that opportunity, I would have been a math teacher, either a math teacher or a helicopter pilot. But that's another speech. <laughs> my passion is to teach. You know when I discovered that? It was when it was library period. So if you're old enough, where library was actually a period in class, where you had to go to the library. I see smiles and nods. Thank you. I went to library period, and I hated to read. I hated. To, I hated it. And I figured out, because you have to, if you remember library period, you can't leave the library without a book. So I discovered a trick. I would look at the bookworm. You know, there's always one, right? There's a bookworm in the class. And that bookworm would have three, four, five books. So we're all in line. The teacher's there confirming that every child has a book. I would go and I would stand beside the bookworm. And I'd say, oh, that looks like an interesting book. Can I see? Oh, and I'd look at it. The teacher would walk by. Check. She's got a book. Oh, cool. And I would walk out without a book. <laughs> nice, eh? Smart. Smart. But I didn't get away with that too many times. The teacher caught on pretty quick. So she decided she was going to help me find a book. And so she took me to the story section, and she took me to this section. She took me to that section. Like, I don't like any of these books. I don't want any of these books. And then she said, okay, come with me. And we went over to the section, and there it was, my book. The title was The Art of Origami. I took that book home. I never did any origami, but I read that book cover to cover because it was a how-to instruction book. I read the instructions, and I found my purpose. I was a how-to kind of person. Today, I have a massive library. Now, we just moved from Toronto to Nova Scotia. And I had to move my library. Now, my husband and I, we have an agreement. He doesn't have to move a book. I don't have to move a car part. <laughs> so I don't know how many banker's boxes I ordered, a million of them, because they're small enough. You fill it with books, and I'm able to lift it and carry it. We rented pods. Do you know what the moving pods are? So they dropped the pod. We had two pods. They dropped the pod off in our driveway. My husband said, this is your pod. This is my pod. I loaded my pod. I started putting these banker boxes in. I got about three rows in. My husband walks by and he said, hmm, maybe we need to rethink this for a second. He said, because there's a weight restriction on these pods. 4,300 pounds was the weight restriction on the pod. And he's thinking, so he's doing the math, and he's looking at my rest of my books, and he's looking at what's in there. So we distributed a couple of rows of books and then some lighter stuff, and then a couple more rows of books and some lighter stuff, and a couple more rows of books. They came to pick up the pod in Nova Scotia on the other end. Finally, the pod gets dropped off. My husband walks out. The driver says, what is in this pod? <laughs> my husband said, oh, that's my wife's library. That'll do it, he said. He said, you are so lucky that when we, the, the pod went by train from Toronto to Nova Scotia and then by truck from the port to my driveway. He said, you are so lucky you live on the southern end of the province because on the northern end of the province, there's a weigh scale. You know how much my pod weighed? 8,700 pounds. <laughs> said, I'm not even sure how we got here. <laughs> but that's my library. 
from that Art of Origami book, I have a library of business books and how-tos. In my IT career, one of my favorite parts of my job was to do user documentation. It was the hardest job on the planet, but I was good at it because it was how-to. I found my purpose. I found what my life was to be. I did it my way, and I got good at it. So what about you? What's your story? What's your art of origami? Now, as a teacher, I'm going to give you a little bit of homework. That was quite the groan there, Jim. (laughs) Your homework is to Google Team Sky Marginal Gains. Team Sky Marginal Gains. Team Sky is a cycling team that went into the Tour de France a number of times, never won. When you Google this, you'll find a video where James Clear, the author of Atomic Habits, perhaps you've read that book, is telling the story of the new coach who had been hired on Team Sky. And his principle was, if you do 1% more every day, a tiny incremental change to improve, you can get exponentially better. And that's what he did with that team. Now, no spoiler alerts. I will not tell you whether or not they won the Tour de France. I will also not tell you how many times they may or may not have won the Tour de France. You go figure it out. But by making tiny incremental marginal gains, in Toastmasters, you've got 58 days Eight weeks, two days left in the Toastmasters year. What can you do? What goal have you not yet accomplished? What result have you not yet finished? It is not too late. It is never too late. It is never too late to be what you might have been. Don't give up. Finish your race. You're out the gate. You're in the home stretch. Finish strong. Look at what can I do in 58 days so that I can accomplish my goals. I can deliver on what I want to do. I help my club. Maybe I bring in a new member. That one little thing. What can you do? If every single one of us did some marginal gain, imagine. Imagine where we could be. Jillian, who's ever heard of Phantom of the Opera? Who's ever heard of Cats? Then you have been the beneficiary of that seven-year-old, Jillian Lynn. Jillian Lynn went to the London school where she learned to be a ballerina. She became a principal at the ballet. She became a principal dancer at the ballet, London Ballet School at the Opera House. And she was the choreographer for Phantom of the Opera and Cats. She knew what she wanted to do and she dedicated her life to getting good at it. She did it her way. She went to that dance school. Her mother took her. She came home on her first day and she said, Mommy, 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 the whole school is full of kids just like me who can't sit still. (laughs) She learned her way because her mother followed the prescription from that doctor. She had found her purpose. In her heart, in her mind, in her soul, Jillian was a dancer. What's inside you? What's your inner dancer? What's your inner racehorse? Toastmasters gives us this incredible opportunity to unleash all the potential that we have inside of us. And what it takes is for us to ignite that spark. What's your why? Figure out what you want to achieve in life, who you want to become. Get good at it. And the only way you can get really good at it is by doing it your way. I bring greetings 
from World Headquarters as your international director from Region 6. And I'm curious to know if there's anybody interested in knowing what international director is all about, because I would be happy <laughs> to share. Oh, I got one hand. Do I see two? I see two hands. Yeah. All right. All right. It is an incredible journey that on op and opportunity that we have available to us because we are members of this incredible transformative organization. Toastmasters changed my life. It helped me to run my best race. How about you? Mr. Toastmaster. Very much. You're Thank very you. welcome. You're very Thank welcome. You. Thank you. <laughs> I am on. I am on. I'm on. Please give Don another round of applause. One thing about international directors, they, they help you get your meeting back on time, because we were a little bit behind starting at 9 o'clock today, so thank you, Don, for that. We're going to take a break. We have a contest coming up here directly. There will be a couple announcements that I will do a little bit later, but you have a break. Uh, our chief judge and our chief judge is there, and our Toastmaster, Kathleen Kiznicki. Mike, which way are you going? Fireside. Judges will follow Mike Dalton to the fireside, and contestants will will be up front, so they'll get a chance to see the, the stage and such. Okay. What time is it now? We're looking at 10:15. 10:15. 15. 15. 15 minute, and you'll be back. A little networking. Thank you. <laughs>